Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to try this webcam thing where you see me in the bottom right hand corner so that even when I'm just explaining code and not typing anything, you have something moving on the screen to look at. Even though it's not the prettiest thing to look at, it's still something to look at. So let's get started with this tutorial. Uh, this one's about the null object pattern. You can see here on the screen we have uh, four zealots and a little roach over here who are going to attack. So these three guys, if I attack move over to kill him, and you watch as his health will go down, and say I attack move with this third guy, you can see that even though I attack moved, he got there, but he had no one to attack once he got there. So the roach what disappeared, his target disappeared and became uh, more or less null because he died. So let's see that again. We'll send... Um, these three guys over as an attack move. We'll let them start and once the fourth guy he's attack moving so his target has disappeared by the time he's got to, got there so the target is null. Uh, so let's explain how the null object pattern can help you handle uh, uh, the event when your object turns null in the middle of you doing something and how you can better deal with that in your code. For part one of this tutorial, uh, we're just going to show where you would use the null object pattern. So we're going to show uh, the roach, you know, it dies, so it has to get set to null, and then handling that null condition uh, with a conditional. So here, uh, when the unit dies, um, we'll have to set the current attacking target of the zealot to null, because he's still moving to get there, and he hasn't reached him yet. So once he gets there, he'll uh, try to attack. And once he tries to attack, we have to check if it's not null. And if it's not null, then we can attack. Uh, but if it is null, then we'll have to do some other logic in the conditional. And here we're just saying uh, your target is dead. So to see this in action, you can see that this uh, black circle is going to be our zealot. Three green squares going to be our roaches. So if I click on one of the green squares, uh, the roach will die and then the zealot will get there and if you look in the console here it'll say your target is dead and again click the roach will die before we get there and it'll say your target is dead because we're handling again it's null and once we get there it'll say your target is dead so the idea of the null object pattern is that we can get rid of all of this logic surrounding uh, the conditional that checks whether or not the your, your target is null. So instead of assigning um, his current attacking target to null when the object dies, when or when the roach dies in this case, we'll just say unit get dead unit. So instead of assigning it to null, we're assigning it to something that's going to be referred to as a null object. Uh, so if we run this again, you'll see that it works the exact same way. Um, so when I click, he'll still die, but once I get there, uh, you'll see we're chasing something a little bit di different. I'm gonna say, sorry, I've already died. And that's because we're using the idea of a null object, which I called in this case, a dead unit. So the dead unit is going to just uh, extend unit, and then it's going to override any of the methods that are relevant to uh, something that you would interact with on that unit. And it's going to do absolutely nothing. Uh, this, is, this is just a class that defines nothing. Its only purpose is to do nothing instead of to not exist. So uh, when you actually create this, uh, I'll go into this more later, but you can use a type of singleton pattern because you only need one object that does nothing, one kind of dead unit that you can, you'll try and interact with something that's dead or something that's null, this null object. And once you try that, it'll do nothing. It's not going to throw a runtime error because of anything being null. It's just going to do nothing at all because uh, it's overridden the functionality that you would usually call on it to do nothing. So in part two, we'll go into more of how this idea can be set up um, by starting more from scratch, and then we'll go off from there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.